Hi, my name is Christian Kuhn, and today we'll be going over the counting sort algorithm. <laughs> so, what is counting sort? Counting sort sorts the elements of an array by counting occurrences of each unique element. This is stored in a new array called count. When we're doing this algorithm, we're assuming that there are n integers in the range O through R. We'll call it R in this case. It is commonly called K or it can be called anything. But basically when we say O through R, we're assuming that all the values are positive. It will only work if we have all positive values. And R is in the order of N, R equals O, N. How do we use counting sort? Here are the steps and they may not make sense now, but I'm going to include an example and hopefully it makes a little bit more sense. Step one, find the maximum element of the array. Step two, initialize new array with length max plus one with all elements zero. Step three, store the count of each element in a new array. From this array, we're storing a cumulative sum in a new count array. And then we are finding the index of each element of the original array in the count array, and then we're decreasing the count by one. This sounds like a lot, but it's very simple, and you'll see in the example that I provide. So just to touch on the running times of counting sort algorithm, um, the overall time is O n plus R where R is the range of our elements and N is the number of elements in our array. It is most efficient if the range is not greater than the number of values to be sorted. See a little bit more of this once I provide the example, but counting sort is stable and the same values appear in the output array in the same order as they do in the input array, which is basically our definition for stable in this case. All right, so here's an example of the counting sort algorithm. And for this example, we have an array, which is um, with the values four, three, one, two, zero. So we start going through the steps of the counting sort algorithm. Step one, find max. So in this array, we have five unique different values. So we initialize K to five. After that, you go to step two, initialize array max plus one. So we create a new array and initialize every value to zero with size five. So we have zero, one, two, three, four, each initialized to zero. Once we get this, we put the frequency of each unique value inside this new array called count. So I'm gonna just erase these for now and we'll fill it in. So for zero, we initialize that to one because the frequency is one. One, we look in our original array, we have one value, one. Two, one. Three, one. Four, one. So that's our new count array, and then we go to step three. We store that, and then we take this count array and we store the cumulative sum in a new array. What this means is, what we're saying here is basically, I have this less than or equal to values equal to me. And you'll see what this means in a second. Okay, so for the cumulative sum, we, we're basically saying that we have this less than or equal to values equal to me. And you'll see what this means in a second. So for zero, we just start with one. For one, we look up and we have one, and then we have one below it. So we go one plus one equals two, because there's two or less values equal to one in the count array. For two, we go up to one, so we have one plus these two. So one plus two equals three. And you just continue filling this in for the rest of this array for the cumulative sum. So now we have one and three values before it, four, 
one plus four values before it, five. So once we have the cumulative sum, we find the index from right to left to get the final um, array. So we start here. If we were to start left to right, it would not be a stable, um, it would not be a stable algorithm. But if you go right to left, it is stable. So we start at zero and we go to here in our cumulative sum. So zero is one. For this step, you go one minus zero. Now that equals zero. So we'll take our zero and we'll put it right in here. All right, now we go to two. We find two on our cumulative sum, which is three. And then we go three minus one equals two. So now two is in our index for two. Now we go one over one. Um, one equates to two in our cumulative sum. So we go two minus one equals one. One. Now, we just keep iterating right to left. Three, three is equal to four. Four minus one equals three. And we go to three and we put our, yeah, and then we put our three. Now, last value, four. Four is equal to five in our cumulative sum. Five minus one equals four. And four goes into four. And when, while we're doing this, we want to take this and decrease the values by one, which is what we just did. And to show that, I have that here. But yes, that will be your final array after you do the counting sort algorithm.